Hello, uh, in today's video we're going to go through the Fibero Home Center 3. This is an IoT gateway. I'll go through all the specifications and everything in a little while. This is the first in quite a few uh, videos we're going to do about Fibero products in the near future. Um, thankfully they've sent us over uh, a few for review, so we've got a lot to be working on. Um, and this video is just going to be sort of like an overview of what you get um, with the Home Center 3. Um, we're going to do some more guides into how to put everything together and to set up uh, integrations between different devices and things in the future so if you're interested um, make sure you subscribe for the rest of the, the uh, upcoming series and if we've made extra guide videos at this point um, i'll stick a link at the top of the screen otherwise just wait for the next one so without further ado let's get straight on into the unboxing <laughs> So to start with, we get the uh, the home center box, which uh, like an iPhone box, really nice. And inside, obviously, you've got the home center, which is made of plastic. Um, it's nicely embossed with these different icons here that obviously mean different things. And on the back, a quick add device button and also an off button or an off button underneath simply you have your power input there's a USB for uh, added storage and of course you have an Ethernet port all the details are on the back here which will help you set up for the cloud but it's got the default passwords and things like that Next we've got this little card, uh, I think it goes through to some instructions. Then opening up this bottom section, we've got uh, an Ethernet cable. In this second box, you have the power adapter. And hidden inside is also whatever whatever region you're you're in, you'll get the correct um adapter for your device next you've got some instruction manuals uh, tells you how to do the quick setup and your warranty information as well So the HC3 is the third in the line of the uh, home sensors. Um, there are also light variants which are, um, have a little bit less power than the full variant like this. So to start with, let's go through what you normally get with all of the uh, Fibero products. You get access to the device on a local web browser um, or by the cloud, whichever is easiest. So you can either access it on your your computer or also they've they've got um, smartphone apps for android and ios it comes ready to integrate with uh, google assistant and also um, alexa it comes ready with z wave and can support up to 232 devices um, quite happily and also has support for some ip cameras and um, some alarm systems as well so what's the difference between the hc3 and the hc2 the main difference is to boast about with the hc3 um, it's got a quad core um, processor instead of the dual core in the HC2. Um, it also has two gigs of RAM as opposed to the one gig in the um, HC2. It also comes with full Wi-Fi capabilities, which was not uh, has not been seen on any of the other home centers. The home center three also comes with some features for the future. Um, they're not fully implemented yet, but they will be soon. Um, so the developers are promising. Um, so in the future, you'll be able to use um, 
Zigbee devices, as well as BLE, which is Bluetooth. You'll also be able to use devices that use 433 and 868 megahertz in the near future. So with that said, let's, uh, let's, let's show you what it can do. So we'll just go through how you set up a device. Um, as you can see here, I've already got a button um, installed. I'm also going to add a Fibero wall plug, which simply you could use the uh, button on the back of the device. I'm just going into the settings and I'm just going to add device here. We can set 30 seconds for the learning mode. Every device has a different way of setting it up. On the wall plug, you just push a button on the side of it a couple of times while your home center is in learning mode. As you can see, the console comes up at the bottom, showing that we're in learning mode. And as I click the button on the side, we, we get some information coming through. And after a short while, it will find the device and add it. As you can see, we've got wall plug G added. I've now got two devices on the system. You can manually switch the wall plug on and off from here but what we want to do is set up a scene so that when we push the button it will turn the wall plug on and off. So you can just see that we can just add some more information here. Um, we can change the name of it and we can obviously change the icon to match. Give it a roll. All of this changes the way it shows up on your dashboard. We can also do the same with the button. Next we want to create a scene. So a scene will define what the devices do um, and can run a strict code depending on what you ask it to do. So we're going to add a scene and we're going to use the block scene style because um, it's a little bit simpler. And we'll just give it a name. Anything will do. This is only for your reference really. Button to lamp. Quite simple. So we'll leave everything as auto but we can give it a picture. You can also add your own icons, which is pretty nice. We'll start off by adding two single devices. So I've gone through all this quite quickly, but we'll go um, through from the left hand side and I'll talk through everything that I've done here. On the top of the area, we can see that we're in the main box that says all of these are true. So that's important. Um, and then where we've added the device, we're going to set it to the office because that's where I put the two devices and we're going to be looking at the button. The next box down, we can choose either between central scene ID or battery level. Well, the central scene ID is the one that we actually want. Um, it's a little bit ambiguous, but we're not looking at the battery level. And then the next box down, we can choose whether we want it to be equal to or not equal to. So equals equals means equal to. Uh, and the next box down, we're obviously going to select the button. And then in the final box, we get a selection of different amount of button presses or holding the button. So there's quite a lot of functionality in this one button. You could set it up for four or five different scenes if you wanted to, doing different things. On the right hand side, we've, we're in the main box that says do the following. So obviously the first box references what happened first. And then once the first box has been done, we're going to do the following. Um, so in this case, once the button has been pressed, we're going to do the following, which is once again, the device, which is the office lamp that I've selected in the second box, and we're going to toggle it. So when I push it once, it will turn the device on. If I push it again, it's going to turn the device off, toggled on and off. You can also have the choice of switching it on or off, depending on what you want to do, but there's plenty of functionality here for what you want to do. Once we're done, we press the save button. And as you can see, when I push the button, it either turns the device off, push it again, and it'll turn it back on again. So sort of in review, um, I've had the home center for a few days now, and I've been messing about with what you can achieve with some of the uh, integrations and such. Um, I find it actually really intuitive for someone who's got some sort of, not, I haven't got a programming background at all in any way, shape or form, but um, the simple block layout of the uh, programming of devices and things like that is quite intuitive and quite easy to use 
um there's a lot you can do with it which makes it a little bit more complicated but in that respect you prefer to have more than less it can be a little bit complicated first of all but when you realize how it works and if in fact it's actually very very simple especially if you're setting everything up via the block style which is really just taking the actions dragging and dropping them into the correct place on the screen and then testing it to see if it works um as i say there's going to be plenty of videos coming up on how to set all this up if you find it at all complicated we'll, we'll go through all that um in the near future so i've set up a few simple things so far so i've got a, a simple button that uh, powers a socket um, and i've got some other things that i'm using for data logging and things like that which is re really very interesting the, the possibilities that you can do with this bit of kit and so far it seems extremely reliable i've had no issues whatsoever about whenever i hit that button that socket works there's no delay or anything like that and the stability seems very very good the overall security of the system seems pretty good and um, there's a few things to to note that work quite well um, First of all, you can uh, disable the the ability for um, remote access, which is a really nice little feature. Um, at the moment, I'm using, I find it very useful to uh, log in remotely to, um, as I'm doing some of the beginning of the programming and stuff like that. But later on down the line, no doubt, I'll have no need to access it remotely, so I'll switch that off. But you can leave it on, obviously. There is also a uh, on-off switch in the system set up that where Fabero can log in and make changes if you need them uh, for like a servicing or if you're having experience in technical difficulties that is also available to be switched off which is a really nice feature when you think about things like ring doorbells and things like that and all the controversy around their staff being able to log into the cameras and things like that um, it's just a nice little feature doing a simple check uh, there's not a lot open ports wires on the device which is good um, and also the SSH is open but it is locked with a key combination which is very very good so the only thing I would like to see done better on a security standing is that um, is to force users to change their username and password so if you do purchase this device make sure you're changing your password from the default um, of admin admin because it's so easy for people to guess so hopefully you've enjoyed this video um i think we've covered quite a lot about it already um but there's going to be a lot more content coming up on how you set up scenes uh and throw throw integrations together um we're going to go through some mixing the scenes and devices that you can use with uh, other integrations like um google's home and alexa from amazon we're also going to go through just the simple setup of devices and things like that in the near future there's a lot you can do with this home center there the possibilities are really endless um so i'm really looking forward to uh, doing a bit more hands-on with different devices and things like that we've also got a lot of other Fibero devices to show off um so you'll be seeing videos of unboxings and things like that of that in the near future so again make sure you subscribe for more of this content um and hopefully you've liked it so make sure you like it if you do if you've got any questions about the hc3 um or any other stuff that's coming up or you've got any suggestions for content that you'd like to see about it um, make sure you stick them in the comments i'll try and either answer your questions or we'll try and encapsulate that into some of the newer videos that we're coming out with in the future so thanks a lot